Well, molecules travel in a straight line until they run into something, another molecule or the container. So if we look at the average distance that a molecule can travel between collisions, that's called the mean free path. Mean, kind of like average, free path. How far does it go before it hits something? It's free path. The mean free path will decrease as the pressure increases. There's more collisions. It's not going to be able to travel as far. If nitrogen was the size of a golf ball, it would travel about 40 feet between collisions. So it'd go about 40 feet, bump into something, go another 40 feet before it runs into anything else. And this helps us to visualize what's going on. Where is the other end of that? Well, we'll just start here. So this guy travels in a straight line, bounces and hits something. Bounces off, hits this particle, goes up here, hits another particle, another particle, another particle, another particle, another particle. Ah, and then fades off into nothing. There had to be an end there somewhere. <laughs> but they're like, well, you, do you know about the game Pong? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the original video game, right? And th this was a, it was really cool, believe <laughs> me. Atari, oh wow, you know, you were really big time if you had an Atari. So it was really simple. There were these two paddles if you were doing two player. Um, let's, just, let's just do one player. So you've got your paddle down here and there's this little blip. And this thing would move in a straight line until it hits something. And you had to keep it from hitting the floor, basically. And you just slide your paddle around. And you know, if you were moving your paddle as you hit it, you could kind of put some spin on it and, and make it shoot off in different directions. But basically, you know, it's, it's coming here, it's bouncing there, and then it's gonna shoot off and bounce. And it never stops. Thankfully, it never sped up either, but it just kept going, right? Until you dropped it, you let it hit the floor. That's what this is like. I envision this as a three-dimensional Pong game where there is no floor. It's just all sides and you've got multiple blips, right? That's what gases are doing. So you can imagine, just back to that for a minute, if we have increased pressure, that means the molecules are gonna be closer together. So we could increase the pressure on this by cutting the volume in half, squishing all of those guys together. It makes sense they're gonna run into each other more frequently. So the distance they can travel before they collide is going to be less. So here are two terms, diffusion and effusion. Diffusion is the process by which gas molecules spread from an area of high concentration to low concentration. What a gas will do is it will spread out until eventually it fills the entire container uniformly. So this is a really gross junior high boy type example. So we've got a visitor to the classroom standing up here and they fart, right? And it's stinky, right? I'm gonna smell it first after the, you know, he who smelled it dealt it. Uh, I'm gonna smell it first after him, but you know, basically a fart is gas, right? You're passing gas and the gas can have some particles in it that are very smelly, right? So there, it's concentrated over here. And at first, we're just like dying over here and the people in the back are like, what? Oh, just wait, it's gonna get there, right? It's gonna spread out and fill the whole room, right? That's called diffusion. Starts in a small concentration, spreads out, fills the whole space. <clears throat> Heavy particles diffuse more slowly because at the same temperature, 
they have a lower velocity, right? The big football players, you know, it's going to take longer for those, you know, the O-line molecules to get to the other side, and the tight end molecule is going to just zip right over there. So diffusion, uh, the speed of diffusion will depend on the size of the particle. Effusion, very similar, but the beginning's different. This is the process by which a gas escapes through a small hole into a vacuum. We see that rates of diffusion and effusion are both related to the root mean square velocity. If we have gases at the same temperature, we can see that the rate of gas movement is inversely proportional to the square root of its molar mass. Right, and that comes from the root mean square equation. So here's the molar mass in the denominator, and it's the square root of that. There's the velocity. So if this is larger, the root mean square velocity is smaller. And that is the rate of movement of gases. So this is an illustration of effusion. So we have um, this box with some gas molecules in it. And over here, initially, there were none. If you have a container with no particles in it, that's a perfect vacuum. And then we have a hole in this wall. Now, what I think of happening there is I think of, oh, that's a vacuum. It's going to be sucking the gas through the hole, right? No, the vacuum can't do anything. What happens is these guys are just going to zing around like, you know, the three-dimensional pong game until one happens to hit the little hole and go through. When it goes through, it's going to come over here and it's just going to keep bouncing around. But it's probably not going to hit that hole again and go back through, right? And so as this goes on, slowly more and more particles are going to hit the opening and go through. Eventually, you'll have the same number of particles, equal pressure on each side, because as the concentration of particles builds up over here, you have a bigger chance of one hitting the hole and going back, right? So effusion is how fast the gas moves into the vacuum. That's going to depend on how fast the individual particles are moving, right? So Graham's law of effusion says that the rate of one gas effusing to the rate of the other, this ratio, is equal to their molar masses in an inverse relationship. So the rate of A to the rate of B is equal to the square root of the mass of B to the mass of A. So helium escapes from a balloon faster than air because helium atoms are smaller. And so at the same temperature, they're moving faster. It's not the size of the particle. It's how fast they're moving. So you could try this at home. Get two balloons, same kind of balloons, fill one with helium and fill one with air, and wait a day and see which one's smaller. After a period of time, the helium balloon will be smaller than the balloon full of air. Air is mostly nitrogen. Why does the balloon get smaller in the first place? Does it have a leak? No. The, the latex has little tiny holes in it. And those holes are big enough for gas molecules to pass through. The helium, because it's zinging around faster, will hit the holes more often and be able to escape faster. It's basically a fusion. So the helium balloon will go flat faster. Mylar balloons don't go flat nearly as fast because they don't have those little holes in them. Right? Mylar balloons will last quite a long time. Any questions? <coughs> so
so here's an example of a Graham's law of effusion problem. And, you know, effusion and the root mean square velocity, um, there will be questions about those on exams, but this is not a big deal. Stoichiometry, gas laws, unit conversions, big deal. Molar mass, big deal. This, not so much. Find the ratio of the effusion rate of hydrogen gas to that of krypton gas. So hydrogen, and it matters here, hydrogen is H2 because it's one of the diatomic elements. And here's krypton. Krypton is not a diatomic element, it's a noble gas. So the rate of effusion, um, and it's, it's asking us for hydrogen to krypton. So the rate of hydrogen is on the top and the rate of krypton is on the bottom. That's gonna equal the square root of, now the molar masses will be upside down. The molar mass of krypton on top a molar mass of hydrogen on the bottom. Well, it's the molar mass of krypton, 83.80. 83.80 grams per mole. And hydrogen H2 is 2.016 grams per mole, square root of that. In the root mean square velocity <coughs> equation, it was very important that we do this in kilograms per mole. Does it matter here? No, it doesn't, because the units cancel out. We can do it as kilograms, but it's still gonna cancel out. So the grams cancel and the moles cancel. This ratio has no units. So again, square root of 83.8 divided by 2.016. So 6.447. So the rate 6.447 to one. This means that helium, I'm sorry, hydrogen, is going to effuse 6.447 times faster than krypton. And a lot of these effusion problems, we're just comparing the rates of two gases. We're not interested in an absolute rate. Any questions?